Hey guys, Leanna here. It's Mountain Monday, and it's a tearaway unfolded Mountain Monday. That's why the mountain looks a bit tacked. It's made out of paper, but it's still a mountain, so you know what to do. Ready? We breathe in. And out. And breathe in. And out. Okay, and uh, Atwa is making faces at me. That's my little messenger chick here. You can pick male or female. It's all good. You don't have to be female, but I chose to be because I am female, and I thought she was cute. But uh, this Mountain Monday takes place on the Monday of Rosh Hashanah, 2015, and uh, I am celebrating Rosh Hashanah, um, and that involves a lot of apples and honey and uh, having people over and making a lot of food. There's more to it than that, of course, and, and uh, that's sort of what the theme of today is on this video. Um, for those of you who don't know, Rosh Hashanah is... Oh no, my Jewish dog is getting hurt. That's okay. Um, but Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of the Jewish year. And like everything else in Judaism, it's uh, not that simple, but for the purposes of this video is the beginning of the Jewish year. Um, and what happens at Rosh Hashanah is it's supposedly the anniversary of the day that Adam and Eve were created, and it's the beginning of the human uh, element of the story of God. But what it means in practical terms is it's supposed to be the day that God opens the Book of Judgment. Yes, God has a death note for anime fans out there. And um, for the next 10 days, the idea is people are judged based on how they've taken stock of the past year and if needs be atoned for, you know, the bad stuff you've done. And the idea is everybody's supposed to atone for something one way or the other. And the, the interesting thing about, you know, my understanding of, of Judaism and, and, and this period of it is that the transgressions you've committed against other people are more important in these 10 days than transgressions against God. Um, which, you know, I get off kind of easy because I probably offend God as much, if not more so, than I offend people. And that's saying a lot if you know what's happened in the past year. But um, I've I've found that in sort of taking stock of the um, taking stock of kind of Jibby felt, see, here's the mountain. Da da. Told you. But it's made you. me think about all the really cool people need all of your that if you are to climb I've gotten to know over the last year. And deliver mm. the message. Off the top, you know, this time last year were very distrusting of me. Um, you know, not very good things because of, you know, assumptions all around. And now, we're cool. And that's a cool thing to look back and realize, I think. And I'm very grateful for that. And I mean, gratitude's a big part of this thing for me because, I mean, it's a big deal. I didn't do anything. But okay, you didn't do anything terribly bad. I, you know, I, I rarely have a lot to really deal with because I'm boring. But, you know, okay, you didn't do anything all that bad, but nobody's perfect. And, you know, the fact that there's a lot of people out there that are willing to see past initial differences, just, you know, because we have a common love of something, that's really cool. And that's really powerful, and I don't think that, that should just be glossed over and go, ah, no big deal. It is a big deal. That's cool. I'm happy about that. And so I just sort of wanted to touch on that on this now Monday, which is going to be shorter than usual because I'm recording it before Rosh Hashanah. I have an Apple Cake in the oven. Oh, no! Um, but uh, I just wanted to say thank you again. I know I've been saying thank you a lot, but I don't think you can say it enough times. Mostly, I just wanted to show you guys Tarawan and give you guys a little bit of insight 
and just sort of what I do as a person. And for me, you know, um, uh, this this type of religion is, is important to me. And you know, a lot of people can use religion to um, do a lot of bad things to people, but it can also be used to keep yourself more honest and, and be more understanding. And it's amazing how much a little thing like, um, you know, oh, you're, whatever you, you do, you're going to have to make good on at the end of the year does. Um, yes, it's a squirrel I'm carrying right now. But, um, you know, it's amazing how, oh, well, you're going to have to deal with this at the end of the year. It keeps you honest. And, um, you know, why, why is this important? Well, I think that people are a little too, um, you know, one of the things I learned over the last year is that I think people take too much for granted that the people around them are similar to them. And that's just not the case, especially when you spend a lot of time online. The internet opens it up so many different people and so many different cultures. And that's amazing. But, you know, the challenge inherent in that is remembering that we, we all do have differences in, in circumstance and that doesn't negate the things we have in common. I mean, you know, in my case and the case of the people watching this, we're all gamers, right? Or at least I assume. I don't know why you watch this gamer, but if you do anyway, thank you. I get enjoyment out of this, but oh, I gotta squeeze my paper. I guess I'm gonna do this. But, you know, we all have that in club. And, but, you know, oh, <laughs> Um, but I think that we tend to get very focused on differences, and to me, it's important, and the thing that, you know, gamers out there in the big bad world taught me this past year was that, yes, differences are important, but, you know, it's also important to focus on, on similarities and what we have in common because it makes an examination of those dif differences so much less needed. And this may sound like a small thing, but it's really not, uh, I say as I meet this messed up gopher. Um, but I, th I think that, you know, for those of you watching, uh, you know, I know that these affirmations <laughs> so much. Well, there's that. Yeah, screw off, Gopher. GTFO. Uh, are you back now? Oh, you disappeared. Oh, well. But, uh, I think that I don't know. I mean, I hope that people don't just, you know, sort of, oh, yeah, that's a thing now. She just says great things about gamers. I wouldn't say them if I didn't mean them. And it is kind of amazing that, you know, if I'm aware sort of every day lately that we're doing all the things lately together that people playing gamers don't do. You know, we do respectfully discuss differences of opinion, we tackle some pretty serious social issues without driving each other crazy. Um, you know, things get heated sometimes, sure, but, you know, this is important stuff, and the, the idea that things wouldn't get heated when dealing with, you know, some pretty significant stuff is, I think, kind of naive that people wouldn't get upset. The important thing is what you do next. And, you know, I think that there's people out there that have shown an exceptional amount of maturity going through, you know, very difficult personal times. And there's been a lot of, you know, deep personal attacks on people and, and a lot of, I don't want to say misconceptions because it's an extended deliberate but convenient scapegoating, I guess is the accurate term. And, you know, 
I'm aware of that, and I'm aware of how much crap people collectively have had to take over the last little while because, you know, <laughs> political issues have overcome basic humanity. And I think what this time of year is supposed to teach us, I don't want to say teach Jews because that's, you know, a, a word relevant. You know, somebody said to me on Twitter when I said to everybody, hey, happy Rosh Hashanah. Uh, you know, it's a Jewish holiday, but I think everybody can sort of get behind celebrating forgiveness. And, and someone said, well, you're only supposed to forgive Jews. And it's like, you know, pardon my being judgmental because that's stupid. The idea that we're, we're only supposed to keep to our own kind, that's absurd. I mean, I'm, I'm Canadian and one of the things I love about being Canadian is the fact that we are exposed to so many cultures. And if you're wondering what's controlling that light, guys, that's the little gyroscope in the six-axis controller. I'm actually moving that just by tilting the, the controller this game does awesome stuff using the DualShock 4. And that's why I want to show it to you, partially, because it's awesome, and I like it. And, uh, but as I was saying, you know, this, this idea that we're only supposed to keep to our own kind, that's, that's ridiculous. I mean, if I kept my own kind, I'd know no one. I don't know any other Jewish ginger gamer chicks. Like, that's very, well, I should say, you know, Jewish ginger cat person gamer chicks. Like, that's a very narrow, it's beautiful world. And I think I'd probably pretty lonely if I just stuck to people who were exactly like me. And I, I love hearing other people's stories, you know, I love learning about other cultures, and I love hearing about how other people in other parts of the world solve the same problems we, we deal with on a daily basis. I think you always learn from that. And so, you know, Jewish holidays have a tendency to get kind of dour and depressing, and the, the goal is to make them not that. And so that's what I try to do every year, and I try to sort of make it... How is this not a Jewish thing? How is this an everybody thing? Because I think that anything worth accepting as a truth is a universal truth. I'm not a big fan of you know, rules applying to one group of people and, and not another group of people. I think that if you're that situational, you have to question what is sort of going on. But uh, that's, I just wanted to give people a little bit of insight into Rosh Hashanah and show off some of Tearaway Unfolded because I think this game is awesome. And if you take away anything from this, it's that, you know, this game has really great, um, adventure platforming gameplay and it's old-fashioned in in its way in that it's an adventure platformer but at the same time it's very very innovative in the way it uses the playstation 4 controller and i don't know why sony didn't you know market this game harder i think because it's some of the content is the same as the the uh, PSP, uh, sorry not the PSP, the Vita version, but the Vita didn't sell terribly well, so, you know, this game is new to a lot of people who, you know, didn't play it on the Vita when we were playing it for the first time on the PS4, and it's so cute and so fun and so, like, yay imagination. I can't say enough good about it. It's solid, it's fun, it's beautiful. There's a ton of customization, and, you know, the companion app means that if you, you know, have somebody else who, you know, if you're like me and my husband only plays games when they're just playing games with me, there's this neat little companion app that he can design stuff while I play the game. And, all right. Um, and I think that's really cool. You know, there's a way to have less skilled players involved. Because, I mean, it is a media molecule game. It is challenging in places. Yeah, you know, right in front of But, uh, I hope you guys, uh, like what you see. Let us make it a sample of it. Because Sony makes great games, so we use the best game. Come on, Sony. Why don't you, why don't you? Um, if, you, if you went to go 
those snowflakes that are drifting by, if you think they look weird, it's because I made them. Um, one of the major features in Tearaway is you can open up this little crafting thing here. Okay, that's a color. So it says hair color. Oh, you can unlock all of these. Um, sure. Uh, what? This is a little wonky, but uh, wait, go back. Um, you can go into this. This is all stuff I've made, and you can go into this little area where you draw. So, what do I want to draw? I'll make a crown, because that's one of the first things you make in-game. And if you don't like it, because you don't want that color, you'll do kind of a gold color. But yay, crown! And this is one of those things that if you find this interface too difficult to control, you can jump into the companion app and, you know, use something with a stylus if if you want more sort of hand-eye coordination, which is a really cool feature. But I kind of like the rough element of it. And then when you're done, because I put a little jewel on the crown, see, yes, that is a crown with a jewel. Shut up. What do you mean it doesn't look like it? But then you put it in the envelope. Whoosh! And it's delivered into the game. And as you can see, I've made like a scary eye and a heart. And this, these are goth lips. I made those. And a hat. I like my hat a lot. And that's a feather. It looks like a peacock feather when it's bigger. And that's a badge of accomplishment. That's a snowflake. Mitts. That's a scary scarecrow face. That's a mustache. That's a coat of arms. I don't know what it was supposed to be. But it looks kind of like a bird in a cucumber, so we'll go with that. And then clouds, and then a butterfly wing. And I admit, the butterfly wing was the coolest part. It's like, you know, oh, design a butterfly, and then wham, it's right in the game. That's awesome. So, I went on a little longer than I intended to, just to show you guys a bit more about the game, because I think it's cool. And also, I don't really remember what to do next. Oh, that's what I have to do next. Right, not with me standing. That's Tearaway Unfolded and it's Rosh Hashanah. And so Happy New Year. Hope everybody has a, a sweet year ahead. And um, that's it. Uh, tomorrow's video is probably going to be a little lighter than usual because it's going to be all day. And uh, there's your awesome videos that would normally happen you know, at that time. So don't worry, we're, we're still going to get. Um, Taught us Tuesday style content because I know you guys like it. I'm gonna continue with the character spotlight things and calling, you know, uh, defensive big group bimbos. Um, I'm gonna try to do one on Shandi from Saints Row this week. So you have that to look forward to. That'll be coming Thursday, and then Wednesday will be a, a preview of the interview I did with um, Marvel News' Merrick Flacco. And that was an awesome interview. So lots of stuff you guys to watch coming up um and uh ooh, i'm gonna sign off before i die and embarrass myself anymore it's a media molecule game guys it's hard okay don't suck that bad all oh, right